uh, the Wednesday, November 3rd, 2021 meeting of the Northern Nevada Water Planning Commission with a roll call, please. Daniel Henderson. Here. Michael Widmer. Present. Bill Houck. Here. Michael Drinkwater. Here. John Enlow. John Flansburg. Here. Mickey Hazelwood. John Martini. Here. John Combs. Here. Dave Solero. Here. Mervyn Wright. Here. John Zimmerman. Harry Fonstock. Thomas Payette. Cindy Turchek. Ron Penrose. We have a quorum. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to agenda item number two, public comments. I have one card here from uh, Mr. Listener. Are you here? I can hear you. I'm Bob Listener um, with Lifestyle Homes. I think many of you know that we've been building homes in Reno for about 33 years now, about 3,600 homes. <coughs> uh, and what not very many people know is that we also have about 4,000 acres, we and partners, uh, all of us live here in Reno, we have about 4,000 acres that are mostly entitled for about 12,000 homes in the North Valleys. These projects, there's about six of them, are collectively known, I've heard this more than once, as the zombie projects. We've owned the land for 20 years and nothing's happening. Uh, about two years ago, the zombies woke up and we've been working on these projects as fast as we can ever since. We have currently four teams of engineers working on Tended maps and final maps. Um, I have notes. I'm almost done. I have notes. Okay. We currently have underway or approved one special plan, four tentative maps, one uh, planned unit development, four final maps, and uh, and basically what I'm here to tell you is that the uh, wastewater projections for cold springs are about one quarter of what we show. And I'm not surprised because zombie projects rarely show up. I mean, I don't blame the planners at all. We haven't done anything with our projects for 18 years, and they're just not in the regional projections yet, but they're coming. Um, the Lemon Valley wastewater flows are at least are less than half of what we project. And we don't even know what really is going on in Lemon Valley except our own stuff. We will send over to you this week, to staff, our projections for our own units for those two valleys. And we would hope that somehow that will get into your projections for what's going to happen in those valleys. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Jen, do we have any other comment for today? No. All right, seeing none, we'll move on to agenda item number three, approval of the agenda. Can I have a motion, please? Move to approve, Solero. May I have a second? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Flansburg. Uh, motion by member Solero, seconded by Mr. Flansburg. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries. We'll move on to item four, approval of the minutes of the September 1st, 2021 meeting. Um, in the minutes, it shows that I was present, but I actually, I was in St. Louis at a conference, so I would <laughs> not have been here. So we just reflect the minutes to show that I was absent. All right, any other comments? Can I have a motion, please? Move to approve the minutes. Thank you, Mr. Drinkwater. Can I have a second? Second. Second, Mr. Solero. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries. We'll move on to item number five, report discussion and possible action on comments on the draft update to chapter seven. Welcome, Kim. Thank you very much. Thank you, board, and I appreciate being here, and this is my first meeting, so this is exciting for me, and I'm, I'm on a learning curve, so I appreciate that. 
Um, I just wanted to start off with a little bit of a, a background, and, and then I'll hand the time over to Jim, um, that we're, we're in the middle of this regional water management plan update, and this particular chapter, Jim's been working very hard on um, to get it finalized for the group for review. So um, with that, I'll give Jim the floor so he can give you an update. Okay, thanks, Jim. Um, at the meeting last, last meeting, I guess, in September, I asked for some time to develop a regional water balance that's consistent with uh, Truckee Meadows Regional Planning Agency's modeling and also with uh, Truckee Meadows Water Authority um, projections that they do for water demand. Um, and, uh, and to develop a model that's mutually agreeable among those parties and Western Region Water Commission staff for inclusion in the, in the draft chapter that's in this packet. Um, and then I said I was going to report back to you today. So here I am reporting. Um, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge a big effort by Turkey Meadows Regional Planning Agency, uh, especially Director Jeremy Smith and GAI's uh, analyst uh, Damian Kerwin. They took the water balance model that was in a private consultant's hands uh, prior to this, this regional water plan update, integrated into their GIS system and, and kind of brought it up to speed as far as, um, as, far as being a GIS model. Um, also, I'd like to acknowledge John Anlo, who's not here today, and uh, his staff, Dave Kershaw and Sean Stoddard, for help on the model and, and, and the entire chapter, actually. Um, so I inserted the, the, re up the revised or updated uh, water balance model, its data and conclusions into section 6.3 in the chapter in this packet. Now, I, I'll admit my mistake, mistake before anybody else does if I can. This is chapter seven. I didn't get to changing the numbers on the chapter that's in the packet, so it still says it's chapter six and all the subheadings and that sort of thing, so just bear with me. As I move to that, but I'll be referring to them as their uh, as their chapter six references. Um, any revisions to the preceding sections, you know, sections one, two, and three, in a, in a front matter, um, they relate really to the revised water balance. So the rest of the chapter is pretty much as you've seen it in its past days. Uh, unless you have any questions at this point, I'll talk through how we revise the water balance. Jan, I think we'll bring up the the actual map on the screen, that'll be the only slide that I have to uh, refer to, but it's also in this packet um, as figure 6 one for the end of the chapter. Um, the water balance is based on a 2020 consensus forecast done by Truckee Meadows Regional Planning Agency every two years, thanks Jim, um, for a 2040 population of 569,385 persons. Um, it's also uh, based on CMRTA's 2020 land use model, um, and the model boundary is the Turkey Meadows State Authority, or CMRTA. Projected water demand and water distribution to the sub areas shown on the map um, are functions of the land use model and do not necessarily reflect Pumla planning. Uh, the total 2040 water demand projection um, generated by the land use model is a very close match with Cumulus projections that are shown in Table 6.1 earlier in the chapter. Um, there's actually a less than 1% difference between the total county estimate that we got from um, CM, uh, from Truckee Meadows Water Authority and, uh, and CMRTA's uh, um, water balance uh, projection. Staff agreed that coordination at the regional level, demand level would be adequate and that the water balance model itself should reflect the land use model output um, as a plausible scenario for future 2040. So in the infamous words of Professor George Bach, who is a modeling expert, he says all models are wrong, some are useful. So what we're hoping is that this is a useful model. Wastewater flow projections match those being used. Uh, uh, let's see, we cleaned up the map um, by removing the domestic well conversion and septic system conversion demands. Those kind of cluttered up the map in the past, and really in the last five plus years, I haven't seen any conversions happening, so it really just seemed like it was a side issue. So we pulled them off the map, but we left them on the table to follow the map, um, just so we would preserve the information. Wastewater flow projections match those being used to develop the effluent management guidance document that I've talked about here before, um, and the methodology for that um, 
and figures are in section 6.2.2. Now those wastewater flow projections, effluent management projections, are also provided by Perkin Young's um, Regional Planning Group. They did the modeling that's been provided to the team working on the effluent guidance document. So we're using the same um, modeling results in the, uh, in the water balance. Finally, um, I didn't show any effluent management capacities or alternatives on the map or in the table following it. Um, instead, the reader is referred to Chapter 4, which is still under construction, um, and it's under construction along with the effluent management planning guidance, uh, guidance document that I referred to last meeting as well, and asked that we develop the Chapter 4 and that that document at the same time so that, there were, uh, so that they are as consistent as possible. So the, the table that follows the map in the chapter, table 6-7, summarizes information shown on the map. Um, I left some things out. I realized that I omitted future wa wastewater flow projections for Cold Springs and for Reno Stead, uh, but those are on the map. Those should be 1,000. Uh, acre feet per year and 3,000 acre feet, acre feet per year, respectively. Um, I also need to round the other wastewater projections. So there's some rounding things that I need to get to. Just a little bit up. Um, water supply and demand figures should, oh, yeah, should also be rounded up. Um, the final sections in the chapter 631 and 632 draw some general conclusions in the water balance on water supply, wastewater treatment, and then on effluent management. So, I generalized some of the things about what effluent management um, in that last section, and I'll, I'll, um, I'll read it to you, because I, I think they're consistent with what we're developing as, as far as the guidance document, but they don't go so far as to try to say this is definitely happening there, or what even might happen. So uh, what I put is options to address the need for future effluent management capacity, and this is region-wide. Um, Divert sewage or effluent to facilities with excess treatment or reclaimed water use capacity. Develop advanced treatment facilities for effluent to produce water of high, sufficiently high quality for discharge to surface water or for aquifer recharge. Develop new reclaimed water systems or connect additional users to existing systems, particularly in topographically closed uh, basins. Uh, reclaimed water irrigation use helps to manage the amount of water discharge to supply water. So that's in particular. Uh, especially when the water level in the lake, if level in the lake is high. Uh, irrigation is a seasonal use, however, and storage or other options may be needed during the irrigation period. Uh, supply reclaimed water for agricultural irrigation uh, uses outside the trucking metal service area, and then discharge to the uh, rapid infiltration basins or creek drains is outside the trucking metal service area. So I think that covers generally all of the, the span of the options that are being considered under this plan. So getting down to the bottom of the, uh, of the staff report, um, staff is recommending that this commission accept this draft chapter for review as it's presented and acknowledging that it's a work in progress and it needs a little cleanup editing. Um, and then provide comments to staff by December 17th, 2021, by way of a secure web-based file sharing platform for which Kim will provide details soon. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll turn it back to you for questions, comments, etc. Thank you, Mr. Smitherman. Any questions for Jim today? I do. Mr. Flansburg. Jim, uh, based on the comments from Bob Listner, in the projections for potential um, build out of housing, um, how would something like that, it receiving information, how would that get incorporated into something, into this water balance? Or is this strictly just, just using those numbers from the regional um, planning agency? That, that was our intent. Just use the, the model output from the regional planning agency. What they do, and I'm sure this is probably a briefing for everybody, is, is they, pro they produce this consensus forecast um, for population for the entire region. And then they fit that into the TMSA using their suitability factors in their model. So if, if, his, if, if regional planning suitability, factor, suitability model 
predicts that development is going to happen in the core, and I think that's kind of the way that they lean, um, then those wastewater flows are going to go to, to Kelmore, and they're, and they're not going to go to Cold Springs. But, but anything could happen between now and 2040 as far as where the development pattern actually happens. But as far as that model that we wanted to present to you and, and have you adopt into the plan is purely an output of, of their model. So if we wanted to, you know, we could put comments, we can include, as we've done in the past, we include comments from the public that you would like to include um, as far as response to the draft regional water plan. Uh, we can incorporate it that way. Otherwise, we'd have to do multiple model runs. You know, what if um, all this development goes into the North Valley? What if all this development goes into the, into the South Valley? And, and run a number of scenarios like that. But what I'm recommending right now is that we just run this one scenario that's consistent with um, Truck and Members Regional Planning Agency and, and their regional plan. And, and just to follow up with that, and, and just for everybody else as well, I mean, this is the model, this is the information we have based on, on these forecasts and where we believe people will go, but we redo this every, every few years and, we're, and we, we relook at these models of where things are you know, actually happening. So you know, as you said, maybe hopefully this model so that it is useful. Right, um, and, and that's a good point because as the consensus forecast is, is recast every two years, this model could be run every two years. That's the beauty of having it integrated into, um, into regional planning work. And then they will take into account, as, as maps are approved and, and the subdivisions are approved, that sort of thing, and that shifts where the suitability shows that the going to happen. Thank you, Jeff. Any other questions? All right, this agenda item is slated for possible action. Does anybody want to propose a motion today? Uh, motion by Mr. Widmer. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Flansburg. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Move on to item number six, report discussion and possible action on comments to the draft update to chapter six, flood management and stormwater drainage. Kim. Thank you, Chairman Martini. Kim Rigdon for the record, Water Resources Program Manager. Um, under this item six, we're looking at chapter six. Um, we, we were <laughs> chapter seven was what Jim just went through, so I apologize <laughs> if I misspoke last time. I was looking at the numbers. Um, so in chapter six, this is the flood management and stormwater drainage chapter. Um, I've had an opportunity to review it. I also um, understand that at the last board meeting, the board had moved to approve it with um, an extension of some time for some comments on it. Staff has not received any more comments on this chapter. Um, so I wanted to report that and bring it forward for your approval um, for us to be able to put that into the package with the other chapters that have been approved if there's not any comments or questions on that. Thank you, Kim. All right, I'll bring it back to the Planning Commission. Uh, any comments? All right, I'll look for a motion, please. I'll move to accept. Motion by Mr. Flansburg. May I have a second? Second, second Mr. Solero. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Move on to agenda item number seven, status and discussion regarding chapters and schedule related to the drafting and presentation of the 2021, gosh, I can't believe we're saying 2040, 2040 Regional Water Management Plan update. Kim. Thank you, Chairman Martini. Kim Rigdon again for the record, Water Resources Program Manager. Um, I put this on the agenda because I felt like it was a good opportunity for me to um, just speak a little bit to the changing of the guard here with the program manager, um, me being the new program manager, and some staffing changes. Um, Jim and I are working really hard together. Jim has been a great mentor in helping me work through this, and, and has we've been trying to figure out how to keep this moving forward and meet the January goal of having a draft plan. Um, that said, with the approval of the two chapters that you just approved, we have two left. We have chapters four and 10 left. Uh, chapter four is the effluent management section. And chapter 10 is essentially the um, overview of what needs to be done in the future, the, the long table, the projects list of what needs to be done and get that assigned. Um, my understanding is that I'll be working on that with Jim over the next month 
um, and Jim is going to be working to complete the effluent management chapter, chapter four. So I wanted to just bring that forward so that you understood where we were at in the process. Um, we will be delayed. Uh, I'm, I'm anticipating a delay in being able to approve the plan and bring a hearing forward to this group. Um, we, I think what we're gonna end up doing is having chapter four and chapter 10 available for review in January, at the first January meeting. If the board, and, and we'll talk about future meetings and, and, and that in the next, um, and the appropriate agenda item. So I just wanted you to have that information, know we're working towards meeting that goal of having a draft available in January. We don't wanna delay this any further and uh, we're working forward on that. And if you have any questions on the schedule or how you'd like to see that move forward as far as meetings, um, we'll be looking for a comment. All right, thank you, Kim. Um, anybody have comments on this agenda item? or questions for Kim. Okay, uh, hearing none, this is slated for possible action. Um, does anyone wanna make a motion? Motion by Mr. Whitner, can I have a second, please? Oh, I'm sorry, was that you, Bill? <laughs> With the masks, it's hard to tell. Uh, I'm sorry, motion by Mr. Hauck. Can I have a second, please? Yes, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Second by Mr. Widmer. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Move on to uh, agenda item number eight, program manager's report. Kim. Okay, thank you, Chairman Martini. Kim Rigdon for the Restford, uh, Water Resources Program Manager. Um, on, on this particular agenda item, I just wanted to let you know that I was not going to be presenting the financial reports and the uh, status of projects. I did not include that. As an agenda item, um, I've been working with staff to reconcile some of the um, uh, financials with the system that we have internally, and I've come... Uh, there's been some snags in me being able to do that, and I, I only want to report accurate information to you, so I'm not bringing that forward in this meeting, but what I'm looking for is... Um, I, I want to commit to bringing that to the next meeting, the next scheduled meeting, and make sure that that information is accurate for you. Um, for this item, I'd, I'd like to get some feedback um, as I'm working on that from the board, maybe some comments from the board on the information that's provided in the program manager's report, and ensure that the information and the content that's provided is what you're looking for. Um, is there, con it's useful, is there additional content that you might be looking to be included in the program manager's report that would be helpful moving forward so that when I prepare it next time, I have all that information included for you. So in, in lieu of going through the financials as I'm reconciling those, I'd like to get more information or maybe some comments from the board on where you find that information to be useful. Um, is there a format restructuring that we need to do? Um, it, and get some feedback from you. All right, thank you. Uh, I will open it up for discussion by the Planning Commission uh, to address the uh, to Kim's questions, actually. John. Yeah, so uh, Kim, welcome. Thank so you. good to have you aboard. Um, I would think, uh, you know, we have certain programs that we allocate funding to, um, you know, projects and programs, primarily programs. And generally how this happens is throughout the year we'll have, you know, one or two um, agenda items that relate to one of the programs and maybe some sort of status update as necessary as progress is being made. I would think just, uh, to me, that's helpful, but also if you just wanna highlight a, a couple of those items and just um, provide some information on you know, deliverables or how those are coming together. Usually the deliverables are, it ends up in some sort of report back to the commission. So appreciate that and it's helpful. And then generally just having I think just the one sheet that, that discusses the projects and percent uh, completed and stuff like that is, is just helpful. It's just, it's just a, one, a one sheet form and it gives us a chance to pull something up and, and have, uh, ask a specific question to, in regards to that. So those are helpful to me. So I that's, that, that's, uh, appreciate that. All right, thank you, Mr. Flansburg. Any other comment? Okay, hearing none, uh, this is slated for possible action, but I, I think at this point, just acceptance of the report is probably the best way to go. So that said, can I have a motion, please? Got you this time, Mr. Hauck. Motion by Mr. Hauck. Can I have a second, please? Second. second by Mr. Flansburg. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
All right, motion carries. That brings us to agenda item number nine, discussion regarding location and possible agenda items for the upcoming Northern Nevada Water Planning Commission meetings and possible direction to staff. Kim. Thank you, Chairman Martini. Kim Rigdon again for the record, Water Resources Program Manager. So I understand that this is a standing agenda item so that we have an opportunity to discuss what the meetings look like moving forward, what kind of topics you want to discuss for the meetings. And um, I just wanted to let you know that as a new program manager, I appreciate regular meetings. I know that um, oftentimes there's been some holiday breaks for December and January. Uh, as we're moving forward with the Regional Water Management Plan update looking like it's gonna be a January submittal, um, we also have some priority setting that we need to work on moving forward and I think I need to get a jump on that. Um, so it would be helpful for me to have monthly meetings moving forward, but I understand if the board would wanna take Jan or December off for the holidays. Um, I think that meeting would be priorities based uh, discussions um, rather than the regional water man management plan portion of the meeting. So I just wanted to leave that open for you to um, decide how you wanna move those meetings forward. The other item is um, making sure that we, I'm, I'm, if we can't meet in person, that we can do virtual meetings. And I kind of wanted to run that by the board and see also what the board's preference is. If you prefer a virtual meeting, if that's something that we're allowed to um, do with this board. So I wanted to throw that out to the board for comment and find out what your preferences are and how you want to proceed as far as looking at priorities on that schedule. All right, thank you, Kim. I'll bring it back to the Planning Commission for comments, please. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Drinkwater. Yeah. Um, my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, we have to have in-person meetings unless the governor basically reissues that, that executive order. Is that correct? Or public meetings have to be in person? Uh, Michael Pondy, you have to have a physical location uh, for the public to attend. You can hold the meeting virtually, but you have to also have a physical location where people can come in and make public comment in a physical location. Okay. Any other comments? I have one comment. Danielle, please. Um, thank you. I appreciate your report. And um, I think just in terms of going forward and making meetings accessible to everyone, depending on what's going on health-wise, et cetera, um, I would be in favor of opening the meetings up to a, a virtual and a, an in-person option. Uh, we've been doing that at our agency for many of our meetings. And it seems to work pretty well. Uh, we've been calling it a hybrid version. So that's just my two cents. Thank you. Uh, Kim, just a comment from me. I, I enjoy being back together as a board. Uh, it's nice to see everybody. We don't know where COVID's going. We don't know what's next. So I'm open to either. Uh, I think it's nice that, and thank you, Mr. Pawnee, for bringing it out that we have the option of it, at least doing either. So my preference right now is to, is to keep meeting here. But if needed, uh, you know, we can do the virtual thing. Okay. Um, if I could. Um, so it does Washoe County for these chambers is it is a virtual is a hybrid option an option? Yeah, we currently do that for <clears throat> many of our boards and commissions that are built similar to this one. Okay. So that would be I, I would find that helpful as well. And then just for City of Reno, we actually have our next uh, our first meeting in December is the first, and we actually have a council meeting that day. So for me, it would be, uh, my recommendation would be that we move to the January 5th, I think it is. Yeah, I was looking to. So January 5th would be the, the next meeting, would be my recommendation. Um, that being said, uh, certainly, um, Kim, I'm available if, if you wanted to um, send out some sort of questionnaire to the group or something via email that we could get back to you, whatever would be appropriate. Um, that wouldn't be serial communications and all those other things uh, that would work uh, for council. Okay. So I can work with, with Michael on what would be appropriate as far as figuring out what we can do for meeting attendance. Okay. Yeah, I was going to mention that I'm sorry you can't make that meeting. I, I am actually in favor of having a meeting in December to keep 
keep things moving along if that is useful to you, Kim. I would find and that very if, useful. And I, if we need to uh, uh, find a date later in the month that keeps the board together, I'm in favor of that. So whichever method you can to pull that together, I'm not sure if we can decide here today, but I'd be open to that too. But I, I would like to see us meet in December. Mr. Chair. I, sorry, Mr. Falero. It's all right. No, I, I would agree. I think a December meeting is important, but I also believe that you know every member here needs to be sitting at that desk for the priority setting. Yeah. So if we can go ahead and, and, and throw it out there to see if we can find a, a date, even if it's a hybrid, so some of us could be you know wherever we're at, I think that would be helpful just to keep this uh, program moving. And, and, I, and I do know with budget coming up, we're gonna have to set some of those things. So I think it is important to have that uh, December date, whatever that might be. But Mr. Solero, if we do a hybrid, how will uh, Mr. Enlow cheat with the dots? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, th I'm thinking we can get creative without we'll dots have to, this year. Like, <laughs> digital dots. All right, <laughs> sorry for that. Any other uh, uh, comments or suggestions for, for Kim? Okay, do you have what you need? I think I do. Okay, I'm Thank gonna you. move on in the agenda then. Uh, we'll go to agenda item number 10. Any comments from the commission today? Mr. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Slayer. Um, it's, it's too bad that this is all the way at the end of the agenda with our comments, uh, especially this meeting. Um, as you're all aware, Kim Riggin is the new program manager uh, to the Western Region Water Commission and then thereby this Northern Nevada Water Planning Commission as well. Um, Kim is actually a mem a, an employee of Washoe County. However, she works directly for the WRWC and so it's a little, little weird kind of how these things get put together. So um, we were able to, to uh, go through a hiring process similar to what we did with um, uh, Mr. Wessel uh, at that time. And so uh, Kim is the result of that. And so I wanted to welcome Kim uh, as officially as the program manager to this group as well. I know that Kim's probably reached out to each and every one of you. Um, you know, I, I got Kim all the paperwork and I said, you know, have at it. Uh, you're thrown to the wolves uh, because they're, you know, part of that interlocal agreement is, you know, I'm, I'm hands off as well. So um, that brings me to uh, thanking Mr. Smitherman as well for continuing to hang on and assist Kim uh, through this transition process. So just want to throw those both out there. Uh, I think they're doing a great job so far and uh, look forward to more in the future. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Slero. Any other uh, comments from commissioners? Congratulations on your new position. I'm sure we're all looking forward to working with you. So, thank you. All right, any other comments? Hearing none, we'll move on to staff comments. Kim. Thank you, Chair Martini, Kim Rigdon, Water Resources Program Manager. I just wanted to um, just express my gratitude also for, for you having faith in me and hiring me, but also Jim has been a tremendous help. I can't imagine walking into this position. Dave said he threw me you know, into the fire, but I'll tell you what, he set me up with Jim and, and Jim has been an invaluable resource in helping me transition. And I have a flood of information coming at me and I appreciate his help and I appreciate your patience while I learn and get my feet on the ground. Um, and I also wanted to say that it's Jennifer Perkett's birthday today, so we can all wish her a happy birthday. Uh, well, happy birthday. <laughs> And that's my, my staff comment. All right. Thank you, Kim. Uh, we'll move on to item uh, number 12, public comments. I have a card from Michael Martini. Thank you, Chairperson. Is that still working? Yes. Um, I'm here a little late. The meeting went a little faster than expected. And they had some unforeseen things come up. Um, with my printer and other things that caused me to miss uh, agenda item six. And so this, I have a letter and some documents that I prepared for agenda item six and for public comment here at the end of the meeting um, because relevant to the plan that's being worked on. And as I understand, the plan is still not final at this point, so it would be appropriate still to submit this letter and these documents uh, for the record, most of which are already of record. Um, in the interest of time, I don't think it's necessary to read the letter unless somebody would like me to, but essentially it's a report from Meridian Company regarding the North Valleys. 
and it has, among other things, some maps attached, and it has some information regarding the recent uh, drainage event, which essentially was kind of interesting because we had some record uh, rainfalls, at least in areas out in the North Valleys, and my company and staff has been studying the North Valleys for decades, and my, myself have been studying it for almost a half a century. Actually, a half a century. Now, anyway, this storm was interesting. It was a rare event, the only one that ever occurred in October of this magnitude. And it produced almost no flooding off of the uh, natural undisturbed areas. It was very interesting. Yet at the same time, there was large flooding off of and amounts of water off of the uh, disturbed areas. And some of my measurements are showing they may be even larger than previously expected. So that's just a subset of this information. I'd like to just turn this into the chairperson or to uh, Jennifer for the record. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Mr. Martini. Is anyone else in the public uh, wishing to make comment at this time? All right, seeing none, we are adjourned.